Good evening. Welcome to our third Advent midweek service. The theme verse for this service tonight is from Isaiah 25, verse 9, which reads, This is the Lord for whom we have waited. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Amen. Wait upon the Lord. Be, be strong great. and courageous. Wait upon the Lord. That's what Elizabeth did. She, she waited, waited for, for a child. John the Baptist. Then she, she said, said to Mary, Mary, When the sound of your greeting came to my ears, the baby in my womb leapt for joy. Wait, Wait upon, upon the Lord. Lord. Be strong and courageous. Wait, Wait upon, upon the Lord. Lord. We make confession before our God. God of all mercy and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we, we admit, admit that, that we have become, become impatient, impatient with, with ourselves, ourselves, each other, and, and sometimes with you. you. We, we have, have turned, turned to our own way, way and, and have, have gone astray from, from your will, will. Lost, lost in sin and needing to become strong and courageous. courageous. We, we ask, ask you, O Lord, Lord, to forgive our sin, cleanse our hearts, and keep us patiently waiting for the promised coming of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Believe and receive the good news. God sent his Son, the babe of Bethlehem, to show his infinite love and forgiveness for all people. Your sons are, sins are forgiven in the holy name of Christ, who came and indeed will come again. Amen. Amen. Wait upon the Lord. Be, Be strong, strong and, and courageous. courageous. Wait, Wait upon, upon the Lord. Lord. We speak the Kyrie responsibly. Lord, have mercy. Give, Give us patience. patience. Christ, have mercy. Give, give us patience and, and peace. peace. Lord, have mercy. Give, give us patience and peace for the, for the living, living of these days. days. We pray. O Lord, render the heavens and come down. Be our strength every morning and our salvation in the night of despair. Show forth your power and might, just as you did in the days of Mary and Elizabeth 
through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, God forever. Amen. Amen. The Old Testament reading is from the first book of Samuel, the second chapter. And Hannah prayed and said, My heart exalts in the Lord. My horn is exalted in the Lord. My mouth derides my enemies because I rejoice in your salvation. There is none holy like the Lord, for there is none besides you. There is no rock like our God. Talk no more so very proudly. Let not arrogance come from your mouth, for the Lord is a God of knowledge, and by him actions are weighed. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. The epistle reading is from St. Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 12. Do not be slothful in zeal, be fervent in spirit, serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope, be patient in tribulation, be constant in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints, and see to show hospitality. Bless those who persecute you, bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice, weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Never be wise in your own sight. Repay no one evil for evil, but give thought to do what is honorable in the sight of all. If possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Those, Those who, who wait upon, upon the Lord will renew, renew their strength. strength. Hallelujah. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the first chapter. Glory, Glory to, to you, O Lord. Lord. In those days, Mary arose and went with haste into the hill country to a town in Judah, and she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. And when Elizabeth heard the greeting of Mary, the baby leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit, and she exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why is this granted to me, that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For behold, when the sound of your greeting came to my ears, the baby in my womb leaped for joy, and blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her from the Lord. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, o Christ. o Christ. Oh, come, oh, come, 
Well, grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Nothing. Nothing. That's how someone summarized Elizabeth's life. Even though she was married to Zechariah the priest, she was nothing because she hadn't been able to give birth to a child and start a family. And now, as we heard in our gospel reading, they were advanced in their years. They were over the hill. She had felt reproach and shame for years. And it was if if her life as a woman in that society had amounted to absolutely nothing. She had joined the ranks of other women in Scripture who were unable to have children on their own. Sarai, Rachel, Manoah, and Hannah. Each one of them had felt shame. Each one of them had felt that overwhelming feeling of sadness, doubt of self-worth, insecurity, and despair. And unlike guilt that can be felt when someone has done something wrong themselves, shame is something we can feel when someone does something wrong to us. It can happen to us publicly, to those who have been branded with divorce, those who are marked by a handicap, or even through social media when someone's mocked, bullied, or harassed online. And it can also be felt privately. When you've been pushed to the edge by a critical spouse, berated by an angry parent, or teased by a bully as a child. When it seems like no one else knows but you. It's enough to bury you because shame in and of itself is also shaming. It's a downward spiral that can make you feel worthless, bringing you to nothing. That is, until it's dealt with. Until then, it can seem as if the dawning of a new day might not ever come. For Elizabeth, a new day did come about. A day that changed her world. As old as she was, she conceived and became pregnant. The son that she would bear would become who we know as John the Baptist. Her whole world had changed, especially when Mary came to visit her. Because when Mary came to visit, she was pregnant with God's own son. Free from the shame and the despair, guilt and the waiting, rejoicing came to Elizabeth. Not just because of her pregnancy, but more importantly, because of the arrival of her Lord, whom Mary was carrying, God's own son. And all that pain that she once felt gave way to joy, the joy of new life. New life and the promise of eternal life. You see, when Jesus came to earth, he brought rejoicing to people who felt they were nothing and had nothing to give. His first miracle happened after the hosts of a wedding in Cana were embarrassed after seeing their supply of wine. They thought that they had nothing left to give as was the case with blind Bartimaeus, who thought he had nothing to lose, so he cries out to Jesus. The widow at Nain, who felt she had lost her everything. The Canaanite woman, who begged for crumbs. Lazarus, who begged outside the rich man's gate. Mary Magdalene, and even the disciples, who once said to Jesus, we only have five loaves and two fish. There were many more examples who thought that they didn't have enough. They had nothing left. And what happens? Jesus shows up to take their nothingness away. Not just their guilt and shame, but ours as well. How does he do that? He does that by becoming the lowliest scrap of nothing. As St. Paul once wrote in the letter to the Philippians, being in very nature God, he did not consider equality with God something to be grasped, but made himself nothing. While shame can be difficult for us today, 
it seems like people back then had an even greater sense of how a person could be put to shame. Jesus humbled Himself and He put others first in their lives. And in return, those who were in positions to honor Him, the disciples and those Jewish leaders, well, they didn't. Instead, they betrayed, denied, judged, condemned, and treated Jesus with contempt, only to pile shame upon shame upon Him, giving way to the utterly and unspeakable shame of His crucifixion. And our Lord Jesus accepted the shame of the cross. He did so, not despite being God, but rather to demonstrate who God is and how connected He is with people who are shamed, feeling as if they have nothing and are nothing. Jesus even once said of Himself in the Gospel of Matthew, Foxes have holes, birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has no place to lay His head. And so, the King of Kings became a slave. The Creator was spit upon by His own creation. The source of truth was found guilty of a lie. The source of light hung for three hours in darkness. And the source of life was crucified, died, and was buried. He went from the pinnacle of praise in the universe by the angels at His birth to the ultimate and absolute nothingness in His death. Why? Because it was there on the cross, as the words of Isaiah once said, that He had no beauty or majesty to attract us to Him, nothing in His appearance that we should desire Him. But with Jesus... Our shame gives way to joy. God freely gives us all the blessings of His healing blood that flows from His wounds to us. Those who are shamed receive joy because of Him. And when nothing is multiplied beyond all hope with Him, there comes resurrection. This is what happens because of Jesus a complete reversal. You don't have to drink. You don't have to work, explain, eat, cry, or bury your shame away. Because in that place of shame, Jesus gives us His overflowing, unspeakable sense of joy. This is the joy that Elizabeth felt when she says to Mary, For behold, when the sound of your greeting came to my ears, the baby in my womb leaped for joy. That's Elizabeth's story. Her story is much more than nothing. It's remarkable because of her nothingness that is turned to rejoicing. And that, that is something. And that something can be yours as well. Wait upon the Lord with rejoicing. In Jesus' name, Amen. We come to our Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we wait for you. More, more than, than watchmen wait, wait for, for the morning. morning. More than watchmen wait for the morning. Lead, Lead us, us in your, your truth and, and teach us. us. For you are the God of our salvation. For, for you, you we wait, wait all the day long. long. O God, inspire us to wait for you faithfully. Serve, Serve you joyfully. joyfully. And give to others generously. Gracious, Gracious Lord, Lord grant, grant healing for, for the sick, sick, courage for the faint-hearted, hope for, for the discouraged, discouraged, and great clarity for all in the valley of decision. Amen. Amen. Taught by our Lord, we are bold to pray. Our, our Father, Father, who Lord art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, come. Thy, thy will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
As we conclude our service this evening, may God give us the faith of Abraham, the hope of Isaiah, the joy of Elizabeth, and the gratitude of Zechariah. God will make us strong and courageous as, as we, we wait, wait upon, upon the Lord. Lord. Amen. 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 Hey.